Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'll be talking about profitability ratios, market prospect ratios, and then going over a few review problems on how to calculate these ratios. So the first one I want to talk about is the profit margin, which we take our net income divided by our net sales. And what it's saying is how well do we use, how, how much income do we get from each sales dollar? And this one is expressed as a percentage, okay? We can also calculate our return on total assets by taking our net income divided by our average total assets. And it, this is a measure of how well do we use our how well do we use our assets to generate net income. The final profitability ratio is return on common stockholders' equity. The way we calculate that is we take our net income and we subtract our preferred dividends. The reason that we subtract our preferred dividends is because we're looking at the return for common stockholders. So we need to subtract out the dividends that we pay to preferred stockholders. So we take our net income minus our preferred dividends divided by our average common stockholder equity. Remember, when we calculate the average, we're saying the beginning of the accounting period plus the ending of the accounting period divided by two in either situation. Beginning assets plus ending assets divided by two. Beginning equity plus ending equity divided by two. And of course, we're only looking at common stockholder equity. And this is a measure of how well the company uses stockholder equity to generate returns for common stockholders. We also have some market prospect ratios and a very popular one that if you ever watch uh, CNBC or read any business journals, you'll see price to earnings ratio. And this is a measure of how expensive is a stock. Is it cheap or is it expensive? That's what, the, that's what it measures. And the way we calculate this, the market price of per share of common stock divided by the earnings per share. And you can think about the earnings per share. It's our net income divided by our number of shares outstanding. That gives us our earnings per share. And then we take our market price per share of common stock divided by our earnings per share, okay? And so this is used as a general guideline for gauging whether stocks are overvalued or undervalued, okay? The last one we, I wanna talk about is dividend yield. We calculate this by taking our annual cash dividends per share divided by our, mar our market price per share, and it's used to compare dividend payments of different investments, okay? So we look at our problems on this page. We have this first one. And so what I want you to do is I want you to work through this problem. And you can see we have some beginning and ending balances here. So you're gonna to have to calculate the average for some of these ratios. And so remember, it'll be beginning plus ending divided by two, for example, for accounts receivable, okay? And You'll also want to think about, for example, with calculating the current ratio, that's current assets. Which one of these assets, which ones of these are current? Okay, So you'll need to think about that when you calculate the current ratio. And then also which one of these, which some of these assets are current, but they're not quick. And so you'll need to know that for this. Okay, And then you'll also be able to have to calculate the average inventory for inventory turnover. All right. So why don't you go ahead and pause the lecture video, give this problem a try, and then we'll review it together, okay? Okay, so let's see how you did. With the first one, to calculate the current ratio, it's going to be equal to our current assets divided by our current liabilities. So which ones of these assets are current, okay? And so we're also looking at just the ending balance for the current ratio, because we're talking about calculating this at the end of the year. So we'd be looking at cash, accounts receivable, and inventory divided by our current liabilities gives us two and a half. And that's a pretty good ratio. We're looking for it over two. In terms of the acid test, we have cash and receivable. Inventory is a current asset, but it's not a quick asset. So it does not go in the numerator when calculating the acid test ratio. And then we divide that by our current liabilities, 1.35. And we're, for the asset test, we're looking at a ratio. We want it to be over one 
and it is, so that's good. In terms of the accounts receivable turnover, we take our sales, 650, and you can see it's all on credit. Now, one of the things about the accounts receivable turnover and day sales out, day sales um, uncollected, is we want to use our credit sales, our net credit sales, because if we're collecting some of our sales in cash, well, it doesn't really make sense to consider that in an accounts receivable turnover because you got paid in cash immediately. So we want to think about our credit sales because the credit sales are the ones that we have the receivables first. And then we're talking about how fast do we collect our credit sales and turn those sales into cash. Okay. So you can see up here, it says it's all on credit. So we would want to use the entire amount. But if it didn't say all on credit, if it had said some of this was credit, credit, some of it was on credit, we would only want to use the credit sales in the numerator. Okay. So we take our 650, our sales, credit sales, divided by our average accounts receivable, which would be equal to our beginning plus our ending divided by two, gives us 10.4. Is that good? Is that bad? It's difficult to say because what you really need is some industry benchmarks, and you'd also want to benchmark your company or your organization against other similar organizations, okay? In terms of day sales uncollected, we take our ending balance in our accounts receivable, and you can see that's net after the allowance for doubtful accounts, divided by our net credit sales of 650 times 365, and you can see our day sales collected is expressed in days, so that's why it's 36 and a half days. Our next one, our inventory turnover, we take our cost of goods sold of 420, divided by our average inventory, which is beginning plus ending inventory divided by two, gives us 6.25 times. And then our last ratio is day sales in inventory. We take our ending inventory balance, divided by our cost of goods sold, multiply it times 365. And then this gives us our 61.4 days. And again, just like day sales uncollected, day sales and inventory is expressed in terms of days, okay? So let's take a look at the last problem right over here. And why don't you give this one a try, just like you tried the other one, and then we'll check it together, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and look to see how you did. So the first one is, calculating the profit margin, which is our net income divided by our sales. And so we have our net income right over here divided by our sales. Profit margin is 8.4%. The next one is the gross margin ratio. Now that's not one that I talked about in the lecture video, but I think you should have been able to figure it out because you should remember what gross margin is and how to calculate it. Gross margin is another name for gross profit. So what you do is you take your gross profit divided by your sales gives us 35%. The next one that we want to calculate was return on total assets. So we take our net income divided by our average total assets, 351. And then we were also told that in the up here, they had total assets of 335, so 351 plus a 335 divided by two, and then take that number and go into 54, 500, 15.8%. Return on stockholder equity. Net income, we're not given any preferred dividends, so we just assume that there's none. Divided by our average stockholder equity. We were told up in the problem that they had total equity of 144, 400 for the prior year, and then we can see we have our 179,400, which is our common stock, plus our retained earnings. That's equal to our equity this year, 179,400 plus the 144,400 divided by two, and then that number into the 54,500 gives us 33.7% return on stockholder equity. The next one is the P/E ratio, which is calculating, which is calculated by taking your price per share of stock divided by your earnings per share. 
So to do this problem, you first have to calculate out your earnings, your not the number of shares. And that's a little bit tricky. And I was going to see if you couldn't do that. But if you couldn't, let's walk, let's go ahead and walk through it. So you can see right over here, I have $65,000 worth of common stock. And then it says the par value is $5 per share. So what I can do is I can take 65,000 divided by the $5 par value. That means I have 13,000 shares of stock, 13,000 shares of stock. So now what I can do to calculate my earnings per share, so you can see with my PE ratio, I have my market, my price of the stock in the numerator, and then my earnings per share in the denominator. How did I calculate this? Okay, I had to take my total net income divided by my shares outstanding. 54.5 divided by the 13,000 shares gives me $4.19. And then that gives me my PE ratio of 11.8. The last one is our dividend yield. Remember our dividend yield, we take our annual cash dividends per share divided by the market price per share. So we are told in the problem that we had annual cash dividends of 19,500, right? So this is step one, 19,500, that's our total cash dividends divided by our 13,000 shares, one and a half, and then what we have to do is then take that number, one and a half, which is the cash dividends per share, divided by 49.5, which is our price per share. And then that gives us, which is your dividend yield. Okay, that becomes your dividend yield. All right, so hopefully you got this right. I think the PE ratio and then the dividend yield were probably the hardest ones to solve. And especially, you may not have been able to cue in on this, but if you could, good for you, because that was tricky to figure out how many shares of stock that did they have. You can take the total right over here, divided by the par value, and then that gives you the total number of shares, okay? So this concludes this lecture video for Chapter 17 on financial statement analysis. Thank you so much.